Hello and welcome to our webinar today on the power of tax tech. My name is Anna Patterson. I'm joining you from Vienna today with a large amount of special guests. And I'd first like to introduce the three academic directors of the program. And they are the ones hosting the webinar today. Um, today's webinar, a little bit about that in just a moment. But I'd first like to introduce Professor Jan Mendling, who's joining us today from Berlin. Hello, good to see you. It's great that you're joining us, um, Professor Mendling. He's namely one of the so-called Einstein professors and works uh, a lot through the Humboldt University of Berlin and also at VU Vienna in the Department of Information Systems and Operations. So great to have you here. I'd like to also welcome Dr. Robert Risse, who's a, one of the second academic directors of this LLM and welcome. Yeah, good morning to everybody. You're joining us as well from Germany, I heard. So great to have you here. All the technical topics, uh, we are fine and hopefully we have a good session. Yes, wonderful. I think we will as well. Um, a little bit about um, Dr. Risse was the former corporate vice president of tax and trade at Henkel, Germany and it's great to have his inputs here today. And joining us as well from Vienna is Professor Alexander Rust here on campus today. Hello also from my side. And it's great to have you here. You're working, I can see, in the Institute for Austrian and International Tax at our lovely university on campus. And we're looking forward to the inputs you have as well. So dear listeners, the agenda real quickly about this webinar, it's going to be a very lively input session and we're gonna ask you to, to ask, basically share your questions at the end of the webinar where we're going to have a, a Q and A session and you're welcome to use the chat in Zoom and post your questions and I'll be asking these questions directly to these three experts today. So get ready to learn about leveraging the power of tax tech. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce the program manager of the LLM who's here with us today, Justina Kaiser. Oh, I was on mute. So hello again <laughs> from my side. You're joining us from campus. So you can know that you're going to be in, in good hands if you're joining us today for the webinar. All right, so looking forward to those questions. I'll hear you all back later. Let's get started. On to you, professors. Yeah, maybe let me uh, start with a short introduction about um, this new master program. We are now in the second year. Um, the first cohort is just uh, behind us, just finished uh, the last lectures. And um, we are in charge of uh, of, of different um, topics. So my uh, topic, my field of expertise is um, international tax, tax policy, European tax. And um, I'm a member of the Institute for Austrian International Tax Law, which is the biggest tax institute in the world. So more than a hundred people are working here for, for the Institute. We have nine professors. Um, around 60, 70 uh, research assistants, pre-doc and post-doc, and um, of course, also many administrative staff members. We deal, I would say, with all fields of taxation, starting from domestic income taxation, corporate taxation, international tax, so the law of tax treaties, um, value-added taxation, and transfer pricing. The Institute also has two centers, um, one on transfer pricing and the other on tax policy. And we are now uh, working more and more with the digitalization of um, tax law as well. So this field is getting stronger as well at our Institute. So what is the goal of this master program? The idea is, so we have spoken with many uh, advisory firms, the big four, um, with law offices, and um, 
they all tell us the same story. It's always we have the tax people and we have the computer people, so the, the experts in computer science, in IT, in, in business informatics, and um, they have to talk uh, to each other. And there's no common language. So everybody is an expert in his or her field of expertise. Um, however, when tax people talk, talk to the computer science people, there is an intermediator, uh, an interpreter lacking. And that is what we want to do with this program. So the tax people understand how system informatic works, that they can tell them how um, the, the, the tax law um, works and so that this is then understood and can be implemented by um, the um, business informatics people. And on the other hand, that um, business informatics people get an idea how the tax system works. And then we bring everything together and we have um, case studies use cases where um, we jointly work on um, how to digitalize, how to automate the tax system. So in the program, we will um, get an, inter an overview over basic tax law. So that's, that's the starting point. And then um, we will analyze, we will go into more detail with regard to those provision which can be easily automated, which can be easily um, digitalized. And so during the program, you will learn about individual and corporate income taxation. So the domestic systems, then international tax law. You will know afterwards how double taxation agreements, how tax treaties are working. We will also have sessions on transfer pricing, value added taxation and custom duties. So what are the topics where we will put a special focus on um, for income taxation, these provisions which can be easily digitalized. For example, we will deal with the interest barrier rules, how to use losses. If you have the choice of different legal forms with regard to tax treaties. So on the one hand side exemption, how do the source rules in tax treaties work? How can you get a better um, a lower withholding tax with regard to transfer pricing. We will talk about the transfer pricing methods. We will talk about country by country reporting. And of course, how reporting obligations can be automated. Um, that is also an area of taxation which can easily be automated, which can be easily implemented by computers, especially if you have the choice between different tax rates, so which program, um, which product, which service is subject to which tax rate, um, when can you get a tax exemption, how about the deductibility of input VAT, and of course, e-invoicing. When you get um, an invoice, this can be easily scanned, and then it can be transferred to the computer system, and then you can communicate with the tax administration um, automatically. So persons are no longer needed for this. And of course, with regard to custom duties, um, how can you get the best trade uh, agreement? So uh, um, which country should be used to import goods um, from to your country? So um, can you go to the next slide, Justina, please? Um, we will also, of course, talk about um, tax processes. So uh, e-invoicing, of course, um, maybe um, you've already heard about a pre-filled tax return. So where the taxpayer only has to confirm um, the return which is sent to him or her by the tax administration. Um, maybe you have also heard about the system in India, which is now supposed to be faceless, seamless, and painless. Um, so automatization, that is one of the strong um, points of our program. And of course, you will also learn about um, the latest developments in international tax, which concern 
digitalization. For example, the taxation of digital services. So in the past, whenever you wanted to sell a product, whenever you wanted uh, to provide a service, you needed to be physically present in the country where you provide the service, where you sell the goods. So in the past, we always had a fixed place of business through which these services were provided, through which the goods were sold. Nowadays, with the internet, um, you can sell um, services, you can sell products without a physical presence. And in tax law terms, that means that a permanent establishment which grants the taxing right to the source country is no longer needed. So as a result of globalization, as a result of digitalization, um, the source countries get less tax revenue. And it's easy to set up a company in a tax haven and then provide the services from the tax haven. So overall, multinational enterprises had the chance to reduce their tax bill. This, of course, from the principle of equality, if you compare local businesses and multinationals, this doesn't seem to be fair. It's not equal treatment. And of course, with regard to the tax revenue, many industrialized countries were facing um, reductions in tax revenue. This was the reason why the OECD and the member countries of the OECD said this has to change. We need a possibility, we need uh, the chance to tax also the digitalized um, industry. And the latest trend was the introduction of uh, taxes on digital services, so digital service taxes, or to deem a permanent establishment if you provide a certain amount of, of services. And um, the European Union has, has, has started. Many countries um, on a standalone basis have introduced these taxes. And the problem now is that we have different taxes in different countries. So the OECD has taken up um, this approach and has published se several um, proposals to tax the digitalized industry. And the latest proposal now in the blueprint end of 2020 is um, to introduce something like a formulary apportionment. Uh, Justina, can you go to the next slide? So the idea is that only the big multinationals should be covered. So at the moment, the proposal is that groups which, has, which have a gross revenue of at least 750 million euros. So overall, that are around 8,000 multinational enterprises, which would be covered by this. And of course, there's also a material scope um, that the enterprises must um, provide so-called automated digital services or as an alternative um, if they are consumer-facing businesses. So automated digital services, this is where we will focus on. Automated means without the help um, of, um, of, of human intervention and digital um, over the internet. And if we just take these two different kinds of activities, we will cover probably around 2,300 multinational enterprises worldwide. So how is the income apportioned? And Justina, this is then my, my last slide. Um, there are three steps with regard, this is called amount A. Um, first, we will calculate the residual profit. This is the profit which is generated more or less as a rule of thumb by digitalization. So we take the overall profit and deduct the routine uh, functions, the profits generated by the routine functions. And then we have this residual profit. And then a certain part of this residual profit will be allocated among the market jurisdictions. It's not yet 100% clear what this reallocation um, percentage will be. It's around 10, 25%. Um, 
there we still need to find a compromise. So a certain amount of the residual profit will be allocated um, to the market jurisdiction. And then we um, just have a proportion. So what is the amount of in-scope revenue? That means the amount of automated digital services which are provided in this country divided by the total of the digital services worldwide. And this is the part, this is called Nexus. This is the part what the market jurisdiction gets. So this project is quite ambitious. And of course, it comes on top of the normal traditional rules. So the, we also need mechanisms for the avoidance of double taxation. And this is uh, done either by exemption or by a credit in the resident state. So in the program, we will go much more in detail about these rules. Um, and at the end, if you have some questions, of course, I'm available as well. So I'm in charge of the tax part. And now we will go on with my colleagues. Thank you so much. I'm uh, grabbing the mic. Uh, hi, I am Jan. Uh, I'm a professor uh, at VU Vienna and also a professor at uh, Humboldt University in Berlin. And I'm researching uh, digitalization and uh, information systems. And um, the question uh, that you may bear is that, um, well, uh, there's taxation, uh, there are tax related concerns uh, in companies, uh, there are tax related uh, services that you may want to provide as a consultant, for instance, uh, or as an in house expert. Uh, but the question is how can we specifically approach? the question of making things digital in, in our own organization or across in interacting uh, with, uh, uh, with different um, external partners, such as the tax authorities. So and uh, what it turns out to be when, uh, when speaking about digitalization uh, from a perspective of what can we do, uh, it very quickly becomes a question of um, how can we actually design our processes in a way uh, to reap the benefits uh, of digital technologies. So, and that is uh, the centerpiece of uh, our second pillar in our uh, study program. And that is the digitalization pillar where we will largely discuss about uh, how we can organize processes and how we, we can make use of digital capabilities that are available. So it means uh, one thing being said uh, with this statement, uh, I, can, I can briefly add a not statement. So um, uh, our idea of digitalization is not uh, to engage you guys with some low level programming tasks, uh, but uh, we actually have to look at things from an organizational perspective. And that means uh, we have to face the challenges of division of labor. Uh, we have to face the challenges of complex tasks that are associated uh, with all kinds of tax related concerns. Uh, and the way to organize this is to think about processes. So in the way how we can think about processes is uh, in two different levels. So um, there's a level that we call process identification. And you see that being mentioned here uh, at the center of this figure at uh, the top. Uh, that is a perspective where we ask ourselves how is our organization or how is our sphere that we want to shape um, organized in a general perspective and which kind of processes play a role there? Uh, on the company level, uh, that in essence means um, talking about uh, which kind of set of processes uh, our company engages with. Um, on a, on a corporate level, uh, we are often involved uh, with uh, some of the generic processes uh, that uh, many of the commercial enterprises have. Um, kind of every uh, corporate has an order to cash process uh, and has a purchase to pay process. Uh, and these processes are also largely intertwined with all kinds of tax related concerns. So it means um, our perspective with identification is to um, identify those processes and those parts of these processes where we specifically want to think about in how far we can make use of digital approaches in order to make them operate better. So and um, once we have identified uh, such a process, uh, we can uh, use different methods and approaches 
that we often describe by the help of, so, of the so-called business process management life cycle. And that is the circle that you see here in the picture, um, starting with process discovery at 12 o'clock, continuing to process analysis, uh, process redesign, process implementation, and process monitor. Uh, roughly speaking, the idea is uh, that any of um, the processes uh, that we may want to make subject to digital initiatives, um, they come along in a way that they are either currently practiced or uh, there are requirements internally or externally that we need to consider when designing a new process. And that is the concern of process discovery. Uh, by the help of process discovery, uh, we get an understanding of um, of the current situation from which we start. Um, it provides a basis for analysis. Uh, this is what you see here uh, at three o'clock here in this uh, chart. Uh, and process analysis asks specific questions about what we can do uh, in order to make certain passages of these processes better. So from these insights, uh, we um, then can make use of various um, established uh, procedures for improving a process. Uh, there are various patterns in how far we can make use of uh, different pieces of, an, uh, of uh, digital technologies in order to make certain, uh, to, uh, in order to address certain problems. Uh, and in this way, uh, we envision a new design of our process, uh, which then is translated into implementation. And very often implementation means uh, that we need to change uh, and modify matters in our existing systems or even further uh, introduce new systems that we do not have in place at all. Uh, uh, that is usually uh, for us as analysts, uh, the handoff uh, to IT people uh, that take care of the technical implementation of these processes. Uh, but the key, um, and that is exactly uh, this translating function uh, that Alexander tried to emphasize, um, we need to um, communicate, formulate, prepare, and uh, design things in such a way that the IT people can make use of this, uh, such that they can set up systems in a way that it meets the requirements that we have on the business on the tax related side. So once these systems are then up and running according uh, to uh, we have uh, envisioned them, um, we continuously monitor if things work as according to how we desire. Um, and that particular, when it, uh, and it, when it relates to tax related matters, that not only concerns uh, the overall performance of the process, uh, but it very much uh, relates to the conformance and the legal compliance of the operations that we are supporting with our systems. Then that's, uh, that's the key point uh, then for analytical approaches um, that um, provide tools and means uh, to automatically uh, analyze large amounts of data um, in order for us to be able uh, to uh, identify whether there are certain deviations that we would not want to see in our business. Next slide, please. So, and um, in essence, um, how can we approach this uh, more practically? Uh, so uh, what is an important concern for us uh, in our study program? is uh, that you guys uh, get in touch uh, with, um, with commercial tools uh, that are used to support uh, these different uh, phases uh, in setting up processes from a digital perspective. Uh, and roughly these uh, technologies can be put into these three groups uh, that you see very briefly describ described here on these slides. So we have on the left-hand side um, various um, tools available for automating processes. So and, uh, that is of key importance uh, because um, many of um, uh, the things uh, that we actually um, need to care of uh, from a tax related uh, perspective are applying rules that are standardized. And that was exactly what Alexander was just uh, showing to us. Uh, there's a standard procedure to uh, approach a particular concern. Uh, we can do these calculations manually, um, uh, but we can also uh, put them into um, systems that take care uh, of uh, doing, for example, these tax related calculations. 
so that we can automate uh, various tasks uh, related uh, to our tax matters. Uh, technologies uh, that we discuss uh, specifically um, in our program are uh, robotic process automation. Um, this is a set of technologies uh, that are concerned with um, automating and digitizing tedious uh, work uh, of experts uh, where they essentially work uh, with different programs uh, between they manually switch on their computer. You would see practically uh, how that works and uh, you will see practically uh, which kind of drastic impact that can have uh, on, your, on your jobs. Uh, the second technology uh, that we are concerned with are technologies uh, that we call um, technologies that provide transformational effects. Uh, these are different uh, types of technologies that help us uh, to automate and organize the overall coordination of processes uh, in a digital way. Uh, systems that belong to this category are called business process management systems or workflow systems. Um, and uh, what is a recent uh, piece of technology that is uh, intensively discussed uh, also in a text context uh, are technologies uh, that are based on uh, blockchains and distributed letters uh, that facilitate uh, the coordination between uh, different, um, different companies, uh, different organizations and authorities uh, on tax related matters. And in the third pillar, uh, we make use uh, of different technologies that provide informational effects. Uh, you can roughly equate uh, these in informational effects with technologies that are related to data science approaches and uh, that provide analysis capabilities uh, that we often summarize under the term process mining. Um, and these tools provide insights based on the transactions and execution records uh, that we have stored in our systems. Um, visualize them and um, actually uh, highlight things at a higher level uh, that we at analysts or managers can make sense of them uh, and draw the right conclusions uh, in order to further manage our business. So, and uh, Robert will also share some words with us on how we can actually apply these um, technologies uh, in a text setting uh, in the case study methods. Uh, and the case study modules. Robert, please. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, uh, Alexander. Thank you very much, Jan. So my part is then the third one to bring everything together, what you have, you have heard now from my colleagues. But first of all, let, let, let me start with a little bit history. What history is all about, you know, in the early 19th, we have uh, several foundations in terms of what should be digital. We have a change of perception of tax activity, legal and tax practices involving in a market perspective, marketable services. And uh, there was Richard Suskind who quoted the Tomorrow Lawyer series said, okay, there will be a huge shift to something else that the tax services or the legal services will be shifted to something else. And this is especially in corporates combined with the competition as well as cost pressure on all the service providers which are coming along. Go to the next, please. This trends then deals with technology, how to document something, you know, and this is in the text arena, one of the buzzwords, how to go for process documentation, how to automate this. Yeah, how to connect what is with the electronic marketplaces who get text. Alexander approached this with the webs initiatives with the pillar one topic, for instance. Then we have e-learning is an old topic as well in the meantime. Yeah, and, and, and I do not go through each and every of these topics here, but this all is going to change the environment we are living in and how to make it executable in the future. And the approach is, you see, the quote is from 2017, roughly four or five years ago. And, you know, in the meantime, we have developed many, many topics of this 
into really an automated form. Go to the next, please. And this means looking specifically to the text field, I guess to combine this text law with data, uh, as Jan spoke about data and tools, how to apply it, I think we can really say what are the most important text types we should start with to think about processes and to think about how to get the text process types into text law. And therefore, I like to distinguish uh, quantitative data types of texts where quantitative, uh, qualitative and quantitative data are available. Quantitative data are mostly available in transfer pricing customs regulation in European VAT or indirect taxes like uh, other taxes, which are indirect taxes around the world. And these taxes, we will give you an overview and we will give you an overview which type of tools should be then applied in so-called use cases. We're going to introduce with you use cases all about that you get glue how this text related processes can be automated, can be applied, and then end. The more qualitative data side, tax accounting, business taxes, and other taxes, for sure, this is a part as well. And you see some use cases in this area as well. Go to the next, please. So this means we're going to deep dive into text knowledge as said in the description of use cases in documentation automation. We will hear about what Jan, Jan's part is in process automation, technology, selection, and development. And for sure, we will deep dive in some of these tools like SAP, HANA, you know, or cloud, Microsoft Azure cloud technology. So we have huge of data. We have 30 terabyte data available as play data for you so that we can make use cases in looking real time into uh, analyzed data from a company. Go to the next, please. So this means all in all, what does it mean? The use case creation, which combines the technology, data, and execution of automation, that's my part to go with you, to try to educate you, and give you the ability to create your own use cases so that you are in practice able to create processes, combine processes with tax law and customs law, because customs law is honestly, it's to some extent simple and very um, good as an example for automation topics. And then we're going to make these use cases so that you have most of the knowledge to really go into practice and apply all these topics. Yeah. Next one, I think this was the last one. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Justina, that's your one. Um, we showed you now the path to success. This means the steps if you are interested in, the, in our program. And the first step um, will be then the online application. The deadline for it will be end of June um, to fulfill um, our online application. After that, you will submit your document. You will send it to me. And then I will um, write you an email and ask um, if you can record us an admission video. Um, so you can talk about your previous knowledge and also your expectations. And after that, we will make the decision for uh, about your your uh, admission and i will send you then um, this decision via email and also some documents and then i will hand over to anna and she will so we can um, answer your questions in the chat well thank you very much justina for walking us through this path to success on the application side of things. And thank you as well to the professors who gave an insight today on the technology behind tax tech and the processes there. We're going to start off our question and answer session now. 
And I think at this point, I'd like to also welcome our participants to take the next step. If you have any further questions after this, my colleague Justina Kaiser would be happy to get in touch with you. Um, she can also do a one-on-one -on -one consultation, of course, and uh, see how your basically expectations might be met through this LLM and also could do a profile check with you to see if uh, you'd be a right fit for this program. So get in touch with her if you're interested in, in taking on the next step in your career and increasing your skills at the interface of digitization and tax law. Thank you very much to our three professors for joining us today and to our wonderful IT support as well from the background. Greetings from Vienna and thank you from my side. Professors, would you like to say some closing words? Yeah, uh, we, we look forward to have you in the program. Uh, so one thing maybe that we did not say so explicitly is that, uh, uh, that it's great fun uh, to work on these things uh, in, a, in a dedicated group. Uh, and um, if I, for example, compare this a little bit with my experience of, uh, of teaching in the general undergraduate courses, um, um, that this is a completely different atmosphere. Uh, so we're working very closely uh, with, uh, with a hand-selected group of people. Uh, and this is uh, an experience that you should not miss. Wonderful. Professor Rust? Yeah, same for me. Uh, we would, of course, love to see your application. Also think about uh, the networking opportunities. So uh, students are coming from all around the world and you are working closely together all the time. So in the use cases, we will have groups and you solve these cases. And if you are coming more from the tech side, you will learn a lot from your colleagues from uh, the uh, system informatics side and vice versa. So it's really hands-on, that is what you will do later on uh, in, in your future career. And Dr. Risse. Yeah, the same for my side. I guess the collaboration between the participants was great. And believe me, there were always strong discussions whether we should use in the use case this or that technology. I think this was great. We even debating whether this or that fits the purpose. And this uh, is a learning curve for each participants and honestly for me for us as well. Well it sounds like a great team is behind the program and we had a great webinar today. Participants joining us from South America, Europe and other parts of the world. Thank you as well from my side and everyone out there hope to hear from you soon. Take care.